Bitcoin's price has fallen by over 6% since Monday. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the technical analysis on BTC, where I'll be sharing my thoughts and opinions as to where I think that price action is heading next. As I get into today's video, if you do find it useful and informative, smash that like button. If you are new to the channel, subscribe, and let's take a look at what's going on with Bitcoin. So here we have BTC paired up with USDT. We're on the one hour Binance chart here. Obviously, we did have that run to the upside coming up into those higher ranges of expectations. And uh, yeah, we've started started to move on down quite nicely since Monday, right? So as I was saying, we've uh, peaked out here at uh, 1400 hours on Monday, uh, UTC and uh Yesterday, 20 hundred hours, we did drop down to $60,301, a 6.48% drop from the peaks of 64478 to the lows of 60301 And while it doesn't necessarily give me the idea that we're finished just yet, I do expect us to see a little bit more turbulence here for Bitcoin's price action. So we're going to take a look at that in a little bit more detail. We did, we did see a death cross here. This happened on Wednesday at 1,600 hours, essentially here we can see a retest of the blue line that is the 50 hourly EMA and we saw the 50 simple moving average the yellow line crossing lower than the 200 EMA the white line essentially being a death cross right when you have the 50 SMA cross lower than the 200 EMA it's a death cross it's more important on the daily time frame than it is in the smaller time frames but you can see here this would have been a perfect opportunity to go short on Bitcoin Specifically, as we saw this rejection and this death cross, we would have been looking for a uh, basically a going short here. Uh, this would have been a 1700 hours UTC candle, and we would have put the stop loss probably just above the um, 200 EMA or just above that previous swing high, and we would target out 1.5 on the risk reward ratio, which you could of course see here would have been a hit profit already. Okay, so it would have been a fantastic opportunity to trade the uh, basically rejection from resistance, right? So obviously on this channel, I talk a lot about the kind of ways that I would approach the market, how I look at things. I usually look for breakdowns, confirmations of breakdowns or confirmation of breakouts. And I use things like Elliott Wave Theory, smart money concepts, momentum based indicators to help us kind of time where those reversals are. Elliott Wave Theory has been really, really good so far. So anyone who's interested in Elliott Wave, wants to learn a little bit more about it, check out uh, cheekyschool.com, uh, linked in the description down below. There's also a 50% coupon code down in the description uh, where I go through a rather extensive course on Elliott Wave so you can understand all the, the ins and the outs of the video that I put out here on the channel. Channel. Now, getting back to this would have been a fantastic trade opportunity. Uh, we obviously have seen a bit of a, a local low here and we are hitting resistance right now. So the next trade in my mind is a short position here on the one hour time frame, but it's not massive. So I want to be aware of that, right? You can see this area of resistance right now coming in here. I'm going to give it some depth so you can kind of see right in this little sweet spot. Uh, essentially, this is between 60,902 and 61,122. And if we go ahead and pull this over here, you can kind of see it hasn't really got any kind of major areas uh, for support and resistance when I do this. And um, so it's really an interesting spot. Now, if we take a look at it from an Elliott wave point of view, there's still the potential for a bit more to the upside. Okay, so if I go ahead and bring that in here, so you guys can see what I'm talking about, uh, we can see here that we is this idea that we haven't yet finished this move to the upside, we are finding those resistances, we are in higher highs, higher lows on the one hour time frame here. So we are still looking for a bit of a push up higher through that previous area of resistance that I was marking out, um, but not necessarily all the way through. So I'm looking for a wick to kind of come up into this area right here, which is between 1 and 1.236 on the Fib scales, as you can kind of see. Essentially, we're looking for $61,115 to $61,172. Okay, that's the area there. Now, if I zoom out of this and I pull this box across again, you can see there isn't really a lot of um, confirmation of this area. You can, of course, see that there's a previous area here where it was brief support, has been resistance here, a little bit of support, was resistance here, a little bit of support, more resistance in resistance. And you can see it's not really um, kind of a categorically definitive kind of area of support and resistance. You can see that the price has danced around this area in both a support and resistance like fashion, but it isn't really kind of definitive. Uh, so we can't use this as an exact range to say this is exactly where the resistances are, but it is a range where we would typically find rejection based on the buyers and sellers and the patterns that they've got going on. Essentially, we'll look for this to be a three wave pattern up to this area of resistance. 
Now there's a fair value gap that sits a little bit higher. That sits right in here. And if we do rally up and we do go for 61,218 to 61,666, then of course that's going to be a bit of a breakout situation, but it's going to be short lived because we are going to be then be facing the resistances of the 50 EMA and 50 SMAs. Uh, so we want to be aware of that, but there is a fair value gap here. I don't think we're going to go for that right away. So I think the opportunity is to go short. So the opportunity in my mind for Bitcoin right now is to think about an entry around $61,015. We put the stop loss above the $61,172, and then we target out 1.5 on the risk reward ratio. We, as you can see, would just be a little bit of a drop here into this range here. So the idea in my mind for Bitcoin uh, on kind of the small timeframes is to see some volatility, a little push to the upside. We look for an entry on a short trade at $61,015, stop loss at $61,189, and then we put the take profit down at $60,753. Okay, 1.5 risk reward ratio, which of course is what I tend to go for, quick in and out kind of jobs. Now, of course, I actually think we're going to drop down lower. And because I think this is a big way for um, from our kind of overarching structure. So there's actually the possibility that we ride this down in a kind of uh, trailing stop for a take profit that sits a little bit lower. OK, so assume that we do hit that sixty thousand and fifteen dollars level. I'm going to go ahead and delete the old fibs uh, off the chart there so we can see what's going on with this new one. Assuming that we do rally up into this area here, our actual kind of fifth wave expectations are going to be sat down a little bit lower between the fifty nine thousand eight sixty two and 60,133. So you could see that we could um, you know, have a much deeper take profit, more down towards the 1.618 in this kind of fashion towards 60,133. The risk reward ratio on that would be a 5.06. So there's a lots of different ways of approaching this, trailing stop, all that kind of stuff, uh, super conservative, snipe in and out kind of thing like I like to do, um, but there's lots of different ways of approaching it. I'll probably be putting my own trade ideas down in our Discord server, which is linked in the description down below. If anyone who has signed up to one of the exchanges that we do link in the description down below, you can gain access to the profit pit. And in the profit pit, we will be showing exactly what I'm doing. Obviously, on these videos, I just share the general ideas um, and you guys do with that whatever you want, right? I'm not a financial advisor. I can't give you financial advice. I just share how I would approach the market here. OK, so I am looking for a short position when it comes to BTC. And talking about trading, Blowfin are at it again. If you're looking for a chance to score some serious USDT rewards, you've come to the right place. Blowfin, the cryptocurrency exchange, is hosting a fantastic promotion where you can grab your share of a massive 100,000 USDT pool. Yes, you heard that right. 100,000 USDT up for grabs. Blowfin is welcoming new users in the the best way possible. If you sign up on their platform and start trading, you'll be eligible to get a slice of that 100,000 USDT pool. Imagine diving into trading and getting a chance to get some of that sweet USDT just for being active on the platform. Here's how you can get involved and get in on the action. Step one, click the referral link in the description down below to sign up to Blowfin. Step two, once you've signed up, you can start trading on the platform. And step three, by participating in trades, you'll be in the running to claim a part of that 100,000 USDT pool. It's that easy. So don't wait around. If you've been thinking about getting into trading or are looking for a new exchange to try out, now is the perfect time to make your move. Use the link in the description down below to sign up on Blowfin, start trading and get your chance to bag some of that sweet USDT. OK, so let's go ahead and show you the Elliott Wave structures on that, right? So for anyone who is interested in kind of Blowfin, all the terms and conditions are, of course, on the website. Uh, obviously, it's not affiliated with YouTube in any way or Cheeky Crypto. This is something that Blowfin are doing. So all the terms and conditions can be found on the Blowfin website. Let's go ahead and show you the Elliott Wave structure that I'm monitoring here. So what we've got going on, in my opinion, is this really interesting structure over this side, which looks to me like a diagonal based pattern. Um, and then we go ahead and show you that as wave one up here for wave two. This is the wave three. This will be the wave four. And then we'll have that fifth wave move to the downside. We then also have a very interesting structure over this side as well. Uh, again, this one's actually quite difficult to kind of place. It looks like there's five waves going on here. Um, but the only way I can monitor that is to actually see it more like this. Uh, if I can go ahead and grab the correct levels uh, like so as I did all this work earlier. So it looks more like this. 
okay and if we hit these kind of expected low points then we are going to be in for some really interesting moves for BTC this of course uh, doesn't actually fall in line with the idea of um, kind of a, a deeper five wave move uh, because we haven't we won't hit the 1.618 at 59,339 so it's interesting to see the structure it'll be a uh, potential uh, zigzag uh, but a zigzag pattern is in the 535 um, but if it does go down into the range that I've kind of depicted down here as expected then we will be looking at this through the lens of maybe a diagonal based pattern and that's going to be one that we're going to have to keep an eye on um, to see whether or not we kind of end up with uh, expanding diagonals contracting diagonals those kind of things again like I say it's a complicated subject but for the most part uh, we look at it at the moment through the lens of an ABC structure, a zigzag pattern, and with the potential of this thing going more impulsive and seeing further slippage to the downside later. Okay, but for now, as it kind of sits here, as you can kind of see, we have the five waves coming down here in a diagonal fashion, and then we have this other move here, also leading uh, with this diagonal in the wave one, a uh, big impulsive move here for the wave three, which is possible, of course, we're still in the wave three, um, and it looks more like this. Uh, so that's going to be the concern where maybe you do hit that 1.618 at a different level. Um, so again, I'm going to leave that open-ended for now and so we can adjust that at a slightly later date on this one hour time frame. Um, but for now, as it sits, this is a very interesting place for BTC. In fact, actually looking at it through that lens, I do think that's probably the most likely scenario where we are actually in the wave five of the wave three, looking at it here. And uh, to me, yeah, it's probably actually the right move to be thinking like this. So uh, we have the possibility of seeing in this actually slip down a lot further um, of course possible still for the zigzag but it does to me actually look like we might be hitting that 1.618 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark that up so everyone knows the levels of breakdown uh, invalidations because these are important levels so for reference on Tuesday 1400 hours we had um, a swing high that swing high was $63,200 exactly and that essentially is going to be what's going to be our anchor point for our um, major kind of uh, 1.618 trigger point okay so where things start to really go impulsive I'm just going to go ahead and make sure I snap this uh, directly on that level because on the Binance chart this is to the penny uh, 63,200 to the penny okay so down here we can see that a 1.618 comes in at 59,320 442. So I'll go ahead and I'll put a horizontal line right here coming in um, at that exact level. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, move that down so we actually hit the correct level here. So uh, 59,324 dollars uh, and 42 cents. Really important that we do that exactly so that we can monitor the exact situation. And what I will do uh, for reference points is here is I'll label this up as a 1.618. There we go. Then I'll go and delete the fibs off the chart. Apologies for all of the kind of yeah, explanations and stuff, but it gives you an idea as to kind of what's going on. So that's where things really get interesting. Now, the balls are going to target something slightly different. They're going to be looking for a rally and the rally of $62,005. That's this one right here. That would basically break this bearish structure, right? So for reference, we have the bears that are going to target out that 1.618 at 59,328, sorry, $59,324.42, right? That's the bears target. And the bulls target sits up here at the $62,005 flat. Okay, so we kind of know the two ranges that the bulls and the bears are going to be fighting over. Okay, our structure at the moment supports the idea that the bears are in control. But should we start to see a reversal and we see a break of this structure, well, things are going to be very different for Bitcoin at that point. Okay, so lots of things to keep an eye on, lots of things to kind of be positive about when it comes to BTC. Rolling this up into a daily time frame, uh, here we can see that we have found support on the 200 daily EMA. So this is the area which is currently acting as support. This is the support for the bulls, right? So you can see here that the bears have been unable to take that price action down deeper. Now, the concern here is that although there might might be the occasional rally in places the, the bears are still looking to take control of this situation to take that price down towards 56,610 to 58,040 dollars okay that is the one to the 1.236 levels right here under a three wave pattern here here and here which is actually a larger um, abc structure five waves down three waves up and we're tracking a bigger five wave move to the downside that's the impulsive structure and the importance of that 1.618 level okay so you can see 
see here that there's this idea here of a nice little move to the downside. Now that's not overly too damaging because actually when you zoom out of this, you can see, yes, we're in lower highs and lower lows on the daily time frame, but this isn't a huge collapse to the downside. So far since March, we've actually seen the Bitcoin price holding up very well. It's only actually dropped down 33.58%, which is actually a little bit better than I was expecting. I'm looking for more of that kind of 45% level, which would actually be taking us down uh, a little bit deeper. Uh, more towards kind of 40 to 40 uh, for $45,000, right? 40 to $45,000 is kind of that kind of range of 45 to uh, 39%, right? That was kind of where my mind is uh, or was at. And at the moment, Bitcoin's price is holding up well, indicating that there's a uh, potential here that it doesn't reach those kind of low levels and that kind of depth. But it's still possible here, if we do lose a 200 EMA that the market gets spooked, we can see that the US government are looking to offload $4.4 .4 billion of BTC that's going to have an impact uh, and we could see you know some interesting kind of volatility with retail investors as the price kind of capitulates down but at the moment you know i'm not terribly too concerned over it it's uh, kind of doing what it's doing now obviously when it comes to accumulating bitcoin that's fine it's going to see reasonable gains like you're not going to do 10x or anything like that but you're going to do you know maybe yeah, double your money that kind of situation possibly um so you know there's a you know a, a potential 2x in it right but altcoins are really the bigger play and whilst bitcoin is kind of consolidating kind of capitulating in this range that it finds itself in the altcoins have been bleeding out quite aggressively leading you into some really good lucrative opportunities right so the play isn't necessarily for bitcoin in itself it is going to be for those altcoins in 2025 where they're going to see a significant surge in my opinion so it's great to see that Bitcoin's holding its ground, but whilst it's doing this, the altcoins are also bleeding out, and that's the opportunity in my mind. So if we do drop down to forty to forty-four thousand dollars, fantastic. But I'm not holding my breath at this stage. I haven't seen any kind of big warning signs that are going to do that. Um, retesting forty-nine, possibly maybe retesting some of these existing lows that are down here, as we've spoken about uh, previously, is one option and one play. And so we want to keep an eye on that. But for now, it does look to me like we still have some more bearish moves but they're not anything to be majorly too concerned with in my humble opinion. But of course, that is all this is. My thoughts, my opinions on the data in the charts as I personally see it. I'm not a financial advisor. I cannot give you financial advice. All I can do is share my thoughts and opinions as I see it. What are yours? Let me know in the comments down below or join us in our free Discord server. I'd love to know what you guys are thinking about Bitcoin's price action right now. And if you have found this video useful and informative, smash that like button. If you're new, subscribe and check out this video right here because it's not one you're going to want to miss.